People are often really frustrated when they can't easily get control of your dog. So today I'm gonna to talk about three really easy tips that you can use to help get better control of your dog and make sure that they think it's a really fun thing. I'm Cal McCann, this is Border Collie Puppy Final. Welcome back to McCann Dogs. Now we're currently babysitting or dog sitting this little border collie puppy final. He's four months old and I want to make absolutely sure that I can get control of him at any time, especially since he's not my dog. So we're going to talk about three things that are going to make things a little easier. One of the most important ways to get control of your dog is being able to reach down and take a hold of their collar if you need to pick them up or hook their leash on. And it's really common when you go to reach your hand down that the dogs will play keep away and they'll jump away from you just staying out of that arm's length. So I'm going to work on teaching Final to actually whoo, come in close to me in order for me to take his collar and I want to make this a really enjoyable experience. So I have some really tasty treats in my hand which he is pretty keen about. I'm going to put them on his nose and then I'm going to first draw him towards me. So you never want to reach out and grab your puppy. That can be a little bit intimidating. We're going to work the opposite direction. I'm going to put the food on his nose. I'm going to draw him in close and while he's snacking away I'm going to slip my hand underneath take a hold of this collar. Once my hand's there, yes, good boy, yes. I'm gonna yes and reward multiple times and as soon as I'm done feeding, I'm gonna let go because I want the most special part to be when my hand is actually in that collar. Now it's really easy to forget not to bring the dog close in, so one of the little helpful hints we can give you is think about drawing your hand so close to your body that your hand actually touches, touches your knee. That way I can be sure that he is as close as he possibly can get before I go ahead and take control. Good boy, yes. Now there's gonna be a lot of times where I need Final to pay attention to me. So what I need to do is build a lot of value for his name so that when he hears his name, he knows really good things happen. So this is a super easy game that hardly takes any time to do that really teaches the dog to have a great association with their name. So I have several pieces of food ready here and I'm literally going to call out his name right while he's sitting here in front of me and then I'm going to feed him one second later. So it looks like this, Final, Final, <laughs> Final. Good boy. Final. So it's really important that you say the name first and then you feed one second later. So what I'm doing is I'm associating his name with something really delicious. I think he really wants to play this game again. Final. Boy. Final. Good man. Final. Good boy. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna work through this with distraction. So Final is convinced that there is something good, that there is something delicious on the grass. So I'm gonna practice calling his name and I expect him to stop sniffing and pay attention to me. And if he does, I'm gonna yes and reward very generously. If he doesn't, I'm gonna help him out with some of these treats. Final. Yes. Uh, that was just so-so. I'm gonna see what happens again. Final. Yes, good boy. Good, okay, I'm gonna make it a little bit harder here. I'm gonna throw some of these treats in the grass and purposely distract him. Final. So that was a pretty lousy response, so I'm gonna help him out. Final. Yes, good boy. So once I was sure that he was going to be engaged with me, it took me a second to get his attention on the food. I then said his name and then drew his attention directly towards me. And again, I'm not testing his name and crossing my fingers and hoping that he responds. I'm saying his name and then showing him what I expect of him. That was a good boy. I'm going to try it again. Go check that out. Final. Yes, good boy. You figuring this game out? Yes, and you'll notice I'm feeding several times. He's very close to me. He's paying attention. And I could even take hold of his collar to incorporate that first game into the mix. Yes, that was so good, buddy. Good. Final. Yay! Good boy. Now, this particular dog loves treats, but he also really loves to play with toys. So I can also practice these same exercises using a toy as his reward. We can play a little game of tug, letting him know that I absolutely love what he's doing. Now, you may have noticed that while we've been practicing these exercises, I have this insanely long line on Vinyl's collar. And this is to ensure that he can have a little bit of freedom in my yard. Our yard's pretty big back here, but that I still always have control. So when I let him out to go to the bathroom or I just want to come out and play with them, maybe play Frisbee, I have this long line attached so that he can get about 25 feet before I need to start to panic and then from there I can practice my response to name I can draw him in take his collar but this allows him to have some freedom but again it makes sure that I'm always in control of my dog 
Another common mistake that people often make is they run towards their dog and try to tackle them or catch them when they're not listening. And we actually suggest that you do the total opposite. When you want your dog to come towards you, back away from them. That will ignite your dog's chase drive and they'll be much more likely to run after you. We want you to take these three tips and go outside and practice them with your dog so that you can have better control. If you're looking for more puppy training tips, then click that card right there. I'm Cal, this is Final Happy Training.